Hello everybody and welcome back. So you decided to build a gaming PC but the whole demonetization thing has left you broke? Well don't you worry because I got you covered. Your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Wait, what? Oh, oh, sorry, wrong script. So this video is brought to you by me. Yeah, so show me some love. Go ahead and subscribe right now if you haven't already. So at 20,000 rupees, this is a completely entry level PC. So price to performance ratio is going to be our top priority when selecting the parts. So for the processor, I've picked the AMD Athlon 5350 APU. So this is a really budget friendly APU. Surprisingly, it's a quad core. It's clocked in at 2.05 GHz and it fits into the AM1 type socket. Generally, I would not recommend an AM1 gaming PC build because the motherboards that supported the AM1 type socket did not have a PCI Express slot, which meant that you had to rely only on the built-in graphics of the APU. But that changed with this motherboard, the Gigabyte GAAM1MS2H. So this is a micro ATX motherboard, again a really budget-friendly motherboard, but it comes with HDMI, USB 3.0, and two SATA ports. So what more could you ask for at this price? For our RAM, we're using the Corsair CXV, no, CV, C, C, jeez man. So for our RAM, we're using the Corsair CMV 4G X3 M1A. Yeah. So this is a DDR3 4GB RAM clocked in at 1600 megahertz. Now it may seem like 4GB may not get the job done, but to be frank, between 4GB and 8GB, there's not a lot of difference that you'll see when gaming. Now for the hero of the build, the graphics card. For our graphic card, I decided to go with the Zotac GT730. This is like a younger brother to the GTX 750 Ti that I've used in my 30,000 rupee PC build. If you haven't seen that, the link to that will be in the description. So just like all our parts, again, this card is also really budget friendly, but it does give some decent performance and it will let you play all the games that are currently out in the market. For the hard drive, we are again going with the Western Digital Blue one terabyte hard drive. If you've seen my previous two PC builds, you know that I use this hard drive there too. And I have already talked about this one, so you know how good it is. For our cabinet, I have picked the Enter Braven. To be honest, this is nothing special. I just found the most budget friendly cabinet that I could find. Uh, but this cabinet does come with one ATMM fan mounted, so that's a win-win in my opinion. And last, talking about the power supply. Now this is where I had to cut some corners and I am not happy about it. So I have picked the Zebronix PS51 450 watt power supply. It's, it's good. Again, now you have to understand that we really are on a budget here and I, I was not happy with this. I really wanted to get a Corsair VS450, but that would offset our budget completely. But if you can afford it, I would highly recommend that you get the Corsair VS450. Even if you cannot, go with the Zebronics for now. But the first thing you should upgrade when you get a chance is your power supply. Alright, so that was pretty much it for the build. Let's see how this PC performs. Alright, so we're starting off with Crisis 3. You can play this at around low settings with 720p and you should be able to get around 30 to 35 frames per second. Next on our list, we have Assassin's Creed Unity. Now this is a very taxing game and it, it, it does take a lot out of your system. But you can play this with low to medium settings at 768p and you should be able to get around 30 frames per second on this as well. Next we have Witcher 3. Again you can play this at low to medium settings with 720p and you should be able to get around 30 frames per second. Then we have Rise Son of Rome. This game looks absolutely beautiful. For this you'll have to bump the settings down to low at 768p and you should be able to get around 25 to 30 frames per second. Next we have an amazing first person shooter, Battlefield 4. Here we're using medium settings with 720p to get around 40 frames per second. Next as requested by a viewer, we have Counter Strike Go and Dota 2. So you can play CSGO at high settings at 1080p and you should easily be able to get around 35 frames per second. As for Dota 2, putting the resolution to 1080p and the settings at high will easily get you around 40 frames per second. And to finish it all off, we have the crowd favorite GTA 5. You can play this at normal settings with 720p and you should be able to get around 30 frames per second. Alright, so that was it for me in this video. As always, the links to all the parts will be in the description. Definitely go check it out. If you enjoy this video, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. 
Also, share it with all your friends. Until next time, goodbye.